whether I was looking at sort of one of these big religions uh, like Buddhism or Christianity, or even something much smaller like online pickup artistry, for example, uh, that there's sort of the same, you find the same relationship, in my opinion, to the different concepts in your mental ecosystem. And there's, it, I, I think, I claim that there's always some piece of knowledge in pretty much everyone's thinking that they think sets them apart. And I talk about this a little bit in the series that sometimes mm. that piece of knowledge is actually anti knowledge, sometimes it's quite mundane. There are people who, well, I'll just, I'll just give you the components really briefly and then we can kind sure. of come back to it and, and look at uh, some maybe less obvious uh, instances of it. So I, I gave them all kind of Greek names or at least names with Greek roots. Not entirely. I tried to make it somewhat linguistically pleasing. So there is what I call Gnosis, which is the life-changing hidden knowledge. The Nemesis, which is the enemy who wants to hide it from you with the knowledge or destroy you, destroy you something, something pertaining to the knowledge. So I'm this as the Gnosis. Uh, ecstasy, which is the transcendent mental states that are given to the elect. So people who have the Gnosis, who have the knowledge, are able to access some kind of different consciousness in some way, which I refer to as ecstasy. There's also taboos, which are forbidden actions. So anyone who has the Gnosis understands that there are certain things you must avoid. And uh, then there's eschatology, which is a model of how the world will end. And then there's uh, telos, a prescription for how to spend. Now, this one is complicated. This one is, is not as clean as the others. I call yes. it a prescription for how to spend your surpluses beyond the necessity of survival. We can come back to that one in a minute. But yeah, I, I, I kind of I kind of there. thought of Telos as like works, basically. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. what you should be doing in the meantime while you're waiting for the eschaton. Right. That's a, that's a good way of putting it. And I, I especially emphasize it's what you do beyond necessity. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's what is the end goal? That's what Telos means, right? It means purpose. Right. So it's not just, you know, everyone, regardless of, of their beliefs or their sort of mental world, they have to do things, they have to sleep, they have to eat, they mostly have to procreate. Uh, and, and, you know, there's just a lot of banal uh, contingencies in life that everyone has to go through. But mm -hmm. then there's this question of, okay, well, so you've, you've momentarily met all of those requirements. Now, what are you supposed to do? And so that's, yeah, works. And I, I think of it as purpose. So if you're a Christian, you might think the purpose is to glorify God, or maybe it's to save other souls or some combination of those things. Perhaps mm -hmm. maybe you think your highest calling is to glorify God by saving souls. That's that's not extremely important to me, but I wanted to come up with a concept that could cover evangelism, which I think is really, really critical to many, but not all religious practices, but which can also cover something like Brutus is actually the Telos is sitting quietly facing a wall and exploring like your kind of inner uh, subjectivity, right? But I, I see both of those things as purpose in a sense. Mm, okay, so you come up with this framework. Uh, one of the things that I found interesting was just just trying to take various uh, ideological factions, pseudo religious groups, and affiliations and applying the, the six-part component analysis and seeing if you can find good, uh, appropriate parallels in them. And it's it's it seems to be, at least um, upon initial inspection, relatively robust. <laughs> um, it, it was, yes. I mean, it's, it's definitely a product of a lot of thought that I put into it. But I also yeah. noticed that some practices may be missing one element, or maybe even two elements. Uh, in some cases. And when there is a missing element, that's a person who's missing an element in their understanding and their practice. That's when they're sort of most susceptible to conversion to something else. Because, mm, okay. You know, so I, I think you actually need that. You need your yeah, yeah. So, things. 
one sort of through line for this entire series, and I would encourage anyone listening to this conversation, if, if we're if you're not tracking it entirely, please go uh, check it out yourself, is that nature abhors a vacuum, right? And, and so another thing to state, which we haven't uh, done yet in this interview, is that you're taking a functionalist approach. Um, and so the entire framework that you're constructing around religion and the purpose of the American civic religion and the purpose of the Christo Nietzschean synthesis is to fulfill some sort of unmet need or drive or desire in human psychology, correct? Yeah, that's, that's a pretty accurate summary. So it's funny, I was I was arguing with the, uh, about this with someone who I'd rather not name, uh, but he is someone online. And uh, he said, you can't just take a functionalist approach to religion. You can't just pick it apart and, and taxonomize it. And I said, why not? I absolutely can. I, I can and I will, in fact. And so people get really angry when mm. I do this a lot of the time, especially when I kind of first had introduced the concept on my Twitter account. This was actually six years ago now. Uh, you know, I go through a list of what I think constitutes like the gnosis for a series of many, many religions or for a series of or what I think constituted the nemesis. And uh, some people found this to be upsetting or challenging because they said, okay, well, if you list off all of these, then what's, what's your gnosis? What's your nemesis, right? As if mm -hmm. it's like they can't conceive of taking an outside view. So I, when I produce this taxonomy and when I, when I try to kind of pick these things apart, I'm actually attempting to do it in a, a way which is as neutral as possible, as pure as possible. I'm not endorsing any perspective. I'm not attempting to say, look, because I can taxonomize these things, because I can list them all out, therefore they're all false. And I think there is an unspoken assumption that some people have that if you can take an outside view of these things, that you're necessarily endorsing yet some other perspective which is maybe not covered by them. And that's really not my intention at all. Like, I think people find lots of fulfillment and uh, you know, meaning and purpose in all of these, more or less in all of these systems. 